This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 14th day of January in the year 2022. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. Again, a police force rank attached to the forces SWAT unit was charged today for manslaughter in relation to the shooting death of Ezekiel businessman or in Boston. The SWAT officer, 31-year-old Sherwin Peters, who was originally from Linden, appeared at the Georgian Magistrates Court this morning, where the manslaughter charge was read to him. He is accused of shooting the businessman to death during a SWAT unit operation. The magistrate placed the policeman on $1 million bail and transferred the matter to the Anna Regina Magistrates Court. Peters did not say much during his appearance, but was seen trembling as he made his way into the courthouse in the company of investigators from the Criminal Investigations Department. It appeared as though he was taken to court from his job since he was wearing the unit's pants and footwear, but with a casual t-shirt. Two attorneys representing the interests of the dead man's family indicated their interest in the matter in the court. The decision to charge Sherwin Peters for manslaughter followed the advice of the Director of Public Prosecutions. The advice came after almost four months of investigations by the Forces Office of Professional Responsibility and the Police Complaints Authority. The businessman, Orrin Boston, was in his home sleeping on the 15th of September last year when a group of SWAT unit officers barged into the house and one of them opened fire on him while he was still in his bed. The shooting death led to a national outrage and saw the government dispatching ministers and senior police officers to the community of Dartmouth on the Escobar coast to quell the protests and promise a thorough investigation. The investigation took almost four months and the charge was announced just as family members started to express their agitation over the sloth of the investigations. More news coming up in just a moment. What is fiber? Think exceptional. GTT Fiber is an advanced high-speed internet product that delivers broadband by fiber optic cables with download speeds of up to 150 megabits per second. It means your internet is faster. And GTT Fiber comes with the added coverage of our Plume HomePass Wi-Fi system. Plume extends your Wi-Fi signal to ensure that you have the best experience in every corner of your home with Wi-Fi everywhere. Upgrade to GTT fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow it's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made where happiness lives you may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach but we at republic want you to know that there's always a way ask us about our suite of mortgages let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo under the theme Charting a Sustainable Energy Future will be hosted at the Guyana Marriott from the 15th to the 18th of February 2022. Meet and engage with energy leaders from around the world. The conference will feature addresses from His Excellency President Irfan Ali, His Excellency Vice President Bharat Jagdio, Honorable Prime Minister Mark Phillips, His Excellency Chandrika Prasad Santoki, Honorable Prime Minister Mia Motley and many other highly esteemed speakers. Charting a Sustainable Energy Future, Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Salt Guyana Inc. Mom, what are you doing with GPL on your list? Child, you forgot I have to pay GPL? You got time with GPL? I have to keep these lights on. The customers who think in that manner and refuse to honor their obligation to GPL? are obviously not playing their part in ensuring quality service delivery. So, I will continue to pay my GPL bill on time, every time. I recognize the value of your point, Mom. You were right. You 
see them trampling in the dirty water again? You know me talk to them this morning, like them don't understand. Every time it flood, they just want to go in the flood waters. They think this thing is fun. You could get serious diseases in the water. And if an electrical line fall in the water, you could get electrocuted. Little boy, you want to tell you not to play in that water? Come here this minute. You see the water don't start coming in the house? When you're living in a downstairs, you just got to take precautions. That is right. You got to make sure there's a pair of long boots for every member of the family. Protect drinking water from contamination. Keep a stock of foods that can not spile. And have some place to go if your place flood out. Diana, our country, our responsibility. We've got exciting news. All 12 ounce yellow cap buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come get color. your buster, buster $100. This evening, the Ministry of Health is warning of the current COVID-19 surge in the country, which is suspected to be caused by the Omicron variant of the virus, could last for months, based on the trends in other countries. Then I would estimate that a wave, this particular wave, would probably last about uh, two months or so. But that's putting it simply, because there might be so many other factors. So it's very difficult to say that a wave would be one month, two months, three months. You have to look at the multitude of factors. Irrespective of how long the wave lasts, the Minister of Health said persons need to take precautions to protect themselves and to control the spread of the virus. He said the rules must be strictly followed in the workplaces where there appears to be a relaxation of the COVID measures. We have to ensure that we enforce the vaccination policy, which I think a lot of workplaces are not doing. So you need to make sure that your staff are fully vaccinated and now, in the light of Omicron, that they also go and get their booster doses. I think a lot of people have become very complacent. With a high number of positive cases, the Minister of Health again pleaded for the guidelines instituted by the government to be followed, saying that the onus is now on individuals to ensure that the COVID numbers are reduced. He said once persons continue to act recklessly, then the country may take longer to get back to normalcy. In the world of politics, despite that decision of the Central Executive Committee of the People's National Congress to have the recently elected leader, Aubrey Norton, go into Parliament and be made the opposition leader, the party is still discussing the issue internally, Mr. Norton said today. Opposition leader Joe Harmon and the recently elected party leader Aubrey Norton met earlier this week on the issue. Those meetings are expected to continue. The party has taken a position that these issues will be discussed internally and once we deal with those issues, we will together say to the public what the situation is. Um, you would agree that this is not in the best interest of a political party for the details of such issues to be in the public domain before we thoroughly discuss and agree. Mr. Harmon initially held the view that the leader of the PNC reform and the leader of the opposition should be the same person. The People's National Congress reform is the largest party in the coalition. But following Mr. Harmon's defeat at the party's Congress last month, he advanced a new position that the party's internal election could not dictate whether he is removed as opposition leader, since he was elected to that position following the national elections. Today, Mr. Norton continued to dodge questions of his own interest in becoming the country's opposition leader to enhance his political profile. He said he will be guided by the party's leadership in that regard. I think I've been elected by the membership of the People's National Congress Reform. They're comfortable with the work I'm doing. I will continue to do the work. I'll be guided by the party leadership as we proceed into the future. The position of opposition leader is a constitutional one that is voted on by the opposition members of parliament. Those same opposition members can also move a vote of no confidence against the opposition leader. The leader of the list for the coalition is former President David Granger. That list leader is the person with the power to appoint persons to and recall persons from the National Assembly. 
Financial matters to report now as the government moves ahead with its preparations for the 2022 national budget. People's National Congress Reform Leader Aubrey Norton today implored the government to take into consideration the current economic climate in the country and provide increases in wages and salaries and allowances as well as other incentives in the budget. With the World Bank rejecting real growth of 49.7% this year, and with the government expected to have access to the Natural Resource Fund, the People's National Congress reform leader said the government must craft a budget that will bring relief to the Guyanese people and transform their lives in a meaningful way. Mr. Norton said apart from increasing the income tax threshold, there should also be a change in the income tax law to ensure that the minimum wage is never taxed, among other sweeping measures. An interim increase in wages and salaries of public servants of 10%, pending the start and finalization of government union talks on wages and other benefits for workers. At the end of the day, workers must get at least 25% in wages and salary increases. An increase of $10,000 per month on the old age pension and the grant given to those in difficult circumstances. Additionally, the People's National Congress Reform Leader called for the payment of a COVID risk allowance to all eligible frontline workers of $50,000 every six months until the COVID-19 pandemic has been declared officially over by the World Health Organization. He also said a grant of up to $5 million to eligible existing micro, small and medium businesses, as well as startups, should be made available. Set aside about $5 billion to implement a program of infrastructure renewal in depressed villages and communities, entailing roads, drains, community and recreational centers, markets, etc. Et Norton also said he would like to see an earmarked sum of money to conduct an immediate survey of poverty in the country. He said that would guide policies and measures that will assist the residents. He said it should also be a review of all the tax exemptions granted for a switch from tax exemptions to tax credits. This method, he said, will plug the widespread abuse of tax exemptions while garnering additional domestic revenue for the country. In wake of concerns expressed by some members of the CARICOM private sector organization about Ghana's recently enacted local content legislation, the Ghana Private Sector Commission has defended Ghana's legislation and the need for Guyana to have a local content policy. In a statement, the PSC said the purpose of local content straddles countries, regions and continents and forms an integral part of the petroleum sector. The Commission also said it is satisfied that the policies expressed in Ghana's Local Content Act are not dissimilar to those of Trinidad and Tobago's and do not violate the revised Treaty of Chagoramas. It is suspected that most of the companies that are concerned about Ghana's local content policy are Trinidadian companies that have been looking for opportunities in the oil and gas sector here in Guyana. The PSC said Trinidad and Tobago has had a local content regime in place for more than 50 years, which is predicated on maximizing citizens' ownership, control, and financing of all activities along the energy resources sector, thus giving preference to Trinidadians. According to the PSC, it fully endorses the aims and objectives of the Local Content Policy Act, which are designed to ensure that Guyanese companies and nationals benefit from the oil and gas sector. The Private Sector Commission said while it welcomes foreign investors, it also urges respect for the country's laws and sovereign space. High Court Judge Sandel Kisun today ruled that Magistrate Alex Moore acted erroneously and irrationally when he granted bail to two foreign nationals who were busted in Guyana with close to 1,000 pounds of cocaine. The magistrate's decision to grant bail to the two men after several appearances was challenged by the Attorney General. In a statement, the Attorney General's chamber said it was the first time that a state had taken a matter to the High Court to challenge the granting of bail by a magistrate. The state's decision came after widespread criticism of the magistrate's decision to grant that bail.
The Brazilian nationals Andre Pereira and Salim de Almizer were first charged for cocaine trafficking and remanded to jail on the 27th of May last year after their small plane made an emergency landing in Guyana and was found to be transporting cocaine. They were initially remanded to prison, but two months after their arrest and the court appearance, the presiding magistrate granted them bail in the sum of $3 million. The men have no known ties in Guyana, and the Attorney General moved almost immediately to quash that decision by the magistrate. The Attorney General contended in his arguments that the decision of the magistrate to grant bail to the two men was in excess of his jurisdiction, and that there was a failure to satisfy or observe conditions or procedures required by law. The Attorney General also argued that the magistrate acted unreasonably, irregularly, and improperly in exercising his discretion and his actions amounted to an abuse of power. The magistrate decision has been thrown out by the High Court. Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo under the theme Charting a Sustainable Energy Future will be hosted at the Guyana Marriott from the 15th to the 18th of February 2022. Meet and engage with energy leaders from around the world. The conference will feature addresses from His Excellency President Irfan Ali, His Excellency Vice President Bharat Jagdio, Honorable Prime Minister Mark Phillips, His Excellency Chandrika Prasad Santoki, Honorable Prime Minister Mia Motley and many other highly esteemed speakers. Charting a Sustainable Energy Future Guyana's 2022 International Energy Conference and Expo Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Salt Guyana Inc. Sonia, you think people easy? People just really want to do their own thing. Look across the road how we build in the house Lolo. The building code say you're supposed to be two feet off the ground. And when the place flood, them just be the first to complain. But you know sometimes we that just contribute to the flooding with we behavior? You know by, we just throw things in the drains and canals. We don't keep the gutters clean and dispose of garbage properly. By the way, you got an emergency kit? Yeah, Sonia, I got me on and it got drinking water army medicines and for say things like band-aids, iodine, bandages and me on got in toothpaste, a change of underwear and clothing, toilet paper and soap Guyana our country, our responsibility It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We've got exciting news. All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come Fort get Carter. your Buster, Buster one. is fiber think fast ggt fiber has three packages with download speeds of 50 100 and 150 megabits per second that's fast enough to stream movies and music to chat with gran and fran to study and more what would you do upgrade to gtt fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. A 
Across the region tonight, Venezuela has ramped up shipments of gasoline and food to Cuba since November, providing key supplies to one of the president's closest allies, according to documents from the Venezuela state-run oil agency. From late November through early January, the state-run oil company shipped at least three cargoes, carrying about 197,000 barrels of gasoline and other refined products to Cuba. The cargoes arrived at the Caribbean nation's ports aboard a Cuban flag tanker. Venezuela's oil ministry and Cuba's foreign ministry did not reply to requests for a comment, reports the Reuters news agency. Venezuela had minimized gasoline exports to Cuba since early 2020, as its domestic product dwindled due to the poor economic condition in the country. In Jamaica, the naval dockyard at Port Royal is scheduled to receive at least 10 cruise ship calls between January and March. Speaking in an interview with the JAS News in Jamaica, the Assistant Vice President of Marketing and Communications at the Port Authority of Jamaica, Kimberly Stiff, said that in preparation for the visits, the Port Authority is working towards having as many persons as possible within the industry vaccinated. She said that is the quickest way to return to normalcy. She also noted that the Port Authority partnered with the Ministry of Health and Wellness to ensure that various stakeholders, community members, vendors and artisans and others were able to receive their first or second shots at the blitz held in preparation of the calls back in November. The Holland America's vessel, which was making its maiden visit to Port Royal, was the first cruise vessel of its size to call at the port, she reported. And finally tonight, international news. A U.S. official has told the BBC that Russia is plotting to stage acts of provocation to create a pretext to invade Ukraine. A Pentagon spokesman said Russian operatives were planning a false flag operation to allow Moscow to accuse Ukraine of preparing an attack. Russia has dismissed the claims. It comes after a week of U.S.-Russian talks aimed at defusing tensions. Ukraine on Friday accused Russia of being behind a cyber attack on dozens of official websites. Before the sites went offline, a message appeared warning Ukrainians to prepare for the worst. Access to most of the sites was restored within hours. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight and this week. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.